From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. It was a slow ride home for a lot of people in the Billings area as roads quickly turned to ice this evening. Take a look at this. Not a sight you see in Billings very often, thank goodness. Our iCam capturing traffic on 4th Avenue going toward the Heights backed up all the way into downtown there. The winter weather creating a lot of problems on the roadway, several crashes and slide offs and a couple of major traffic jams. Semis and cars going up Main Street caused a two mile backup on 4th Avenue North. David J was in the middle of it all there and uh, has more. Russ, we're out here on Virginia Lane. A lot of people having trouble getting up and down the street here. We've been told by neighbors that some people are having trouble coming down, so there's been a few crashes and cars sliding into each other just uh, right down the hill here. And cars are also having trouble getting up Virginia Lane. You can see some of the tire marks there, not quite straight as they slip around trying to get up the hill. So seeing people having a lot of problems here and all around the city. It's been quite uh, treacherous and a tough uh, run uh, getting out on 4th Avenue North toward the metro. We saw a big backup out to 27th. By around 8 o'clock, things seemed to get a little bit better out that way. A lot of bad spots there with a lot of ice. Some cars having trouble stopping and turning in that area, causing uh, quite a hazardous condition. And up on Highway 3, we did see one slide off that car went down into a, a ditch. It uh, looked like uh, nobody was injured in that particular crash. But a lot of treacherous conditions out there. We're seeing that even here in the Senior High parking lot as cars try to make it up that little incline onto Virginia Lane. And also seeing some tough conditions out on Grand Avenue as well. That's the latest from out here. Russ, we'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, David. No numbers from Billings Police tonight, but the slick streets policy was in place, which indicates a lot of slide offs. Now, if there are no injuries, everyone has insurance and there are no DUIs involved, and officers leave for another incident and have the people exchange information. All right, Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire joining us now. Bob, it really got slick fast up. Yeah, there. it was a classic one two punch. We had cold air move in and then moisture overrunning that, and it just all came together. Let me show you how this thing uh, turned out today. It starts off with the scattered snow flurries we had about one o'clock this afternoon. That hit the streets. The streets are still pretty warm, so that first wave of snow actually melted a little bit and then we had the batch of cold air move in and so what that did that started uh, taking those streets that were wet and started freezing those streets and then when you put some cars on top of it it compacted the ice and it buffed it up just like a zamboni it made it very slick but now here's the good news the snow has pretty much quit in the Billings area and then after that tomorrow that is a warm front moving into the region temperatures are expected to get back into the upper 30s and eventually by the weekend maybe into the 40s but it comes at a price it looks like it's going to be a little on the breezy side this week, and we'll have more about that in a few more minutes. Russ? Thank you, Bob. COVID-19 related deaths across Montana have nearly reached 500. This is county health authorities announced another seven victims today. Those individuals, two in Roosevelt County, one each in Yellowstone, Custer, Deer Lodge, Granite, and Weibo counties. MTN News now reports this brings the statewide total from COVID-19 related deaths to 497. Well, despite the rate of infections, the Yellowstone County Health Officer will not enact any new restrictions this week, but he's not ruling out more in the future. Yellowstone County Health Officer John Felton hinted Monday that new orders may be on the way, but he said in a news release this afternoon that while the situation is still very serious, officials will wait one more week uh, to take a look at the data. The number of patients hospitalized in Yellowstone County remains at the highest level since the beginning of the pandemic. For the first 10 days of November, an average of 124 people a day. Crime Stoppers is now offering a $1,000 reward for any information leading to the location of Amelia Brooks. Brooks was last seen in a residence in the 800 block of Caroline Street on October 13th. At that time, she was wearing a tan wool jacket and yoga pants. Brooks is described as being just over five feet tall, around 200 pounds. Currently, detectives have no actionable leads on her whereabouts. Anyone with information is asked to contact dispatch. That number is 657-8200. President Trump emerged from the White House today, but didn't speak publicly. The president still has not conceded to President-elect Joe Biden, while his lawyers pursue their so far unproven claims of widespread voter fraud. Natalie Brand has more. President-elect Joe Biden tonight announced longtime advisor Ron Klain as his chief of staff. Klain served as Biden's former chief of staff at the start of his vice presidency and as a Bolazar in the Obama administration. Earlier, Biden traveled to Pennsylvania to honor veterans at Philadelphia's Korean War Memorial. 
President Trump also paid tribute on this Veterans Day, laying a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier in Arlington National Cemetery. It was the president's first public appearance since Biden was projected winner. Mr. Trump has yet to concede or take questions, but today the president attacked Philadelphia's Republican City Commissioner on Twitter, accusing him of ignoring corruption. Al Schmidt says election workers there are now under police protection. So that nothing disrupts, nothing slows down or gets in the way of us uh, certifying this election. In Georgia, the Secretary of State said all ballots would be recounted by hand. President-elect Biden leads by a narrow margin there. It will be a heavy lift, but we will work with the counties to get this done in time for our state certification. Georgia has emerged as key to controlling the U.S. Senate. Its two seats will be determined by runoff elections in January. It's all on the line. All eyes in this country are in Georgia. We are going to save the country. This is literally, you know, the showdown of all showdowns in terms of politics and what it means. On Wednesday, GOP incumbents were projected as winners of the Senate races in North Carolina and Alaska meaning the Georgia Senate races will determine balance of power in the upper chamber. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Wilmington, Delaware. Currently, Biden leads Trump by about 14,000 votes in Georgia. Georgia officials aiming to complete that hand recount by November 20th. Local veteran groups gathered in a ceremony in Billings today to honor all veterans of America's armed forces. A ceremony that is usually filled with large groups and pomp and circumstance was foregone for a much smaller event. Q2's Mitch Leggy takes us there. In Billings, members of America's Armed Forces were honored with a ceremony at Veterans Park on Wednesday. The ceremony was scaled back from its usual size to accommodate for COVID-19. But those in attendance still made sure that the veterans were recognized for their service. On a normal Veterans Day, local veterans groups would gather at the Yellowstone National Cemetery in Laurel. This year, the ceremony was broken up into two smaller events with one in Billings and one in Laurel. Remarks were given by Billings Mayor Bill Cole, Governor-elect Greg Gianforte, and representatives from both Senators Steve Daines and John Tester's offices. Chaplain of the Billings Chapter of Disabled American Veterans, Sue Davidson, gave the opening prayer, asking for unity across the country. We cannot let our disagreements tear apart our great country, which so many have shed their blood for our wonderful freedoms we've been fighting for. We are still the United States of America and one nation under you, O oh God. United we stand and divided we fall. We cannot fail and we cannot fall. Members of the Eugene Seraph Detachment of the Marine Corps League presented the flag, while Marissa Underwood, Miss Montana 2020, recited the Pledge of Allegiance. The VFW Post 6774 shot their guns in a salute, while a bugler played taps on his horn. Vietnam vet Dave Rye placed a wreath on the monument in the park, a symbol thanking veterans and their families for their service and sacrifice. And Veterans Day is a great opportunity to return the favor and say to our veterans, we know that you have our back and it's our turn to say to you that we have your back. All of us have veterans in our lives. You're our friends, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, our coworkers. And uh, because of your sacrifice, uh, we enjoy the freedoms that we have in this country. Uh, we can never uh, fully repay uh, the debt that we owe you, uh, but we can say thank you, and that's what we do here on Veterans Day. Reporting in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. Thank you, Mitch, and thanks to all our veterans. And the group also stopped at the Yellowstone National Cemetery in Laurel this afternoon for a ceremony there. A local nonprofit helped feed more than 100 service members and their families on this Veterans Day. The Veterans Meat Locker gave out free meat to veterans who stopped by American Legion Post Number 4 today. Vets were also treated to breakfast, donated by the American Legion and prepared by Phillips 66 Refinery staff. The meat locker operates with the help of donated domestic and game meat from area ranchers and hunters. This year, the meat locker is stepping up its services for the holiday season. The group is currently seeking holiday food staples to distribute on Thanksgiving and Christmas. 
have a meat giveaway or a meat handout with these boxes. It'll be on um, November 23rd from 5 to 7 p.m. It'll be a drive up style that everybody lets us know beforehand their families and their names and they can drive up here after work and we'll run out a box with their name on it and they sign and they go. So it'll be a quick easy way and they'll have a Thanksgiving dinner in a box ready for them by Thursday. To make a donation to the Montana Veterans Meat Locker, you can find a Facebook page in the story on KTVQ.com. Well, health and health care, some of the biggest issues facing veteran populations. The Montana VA says telehealth has been a game changer for them and their patients. Some veterans in Montana have to travel more than 100 miles to get to their nearest VA clinic. Telehealth means that they can connect with a doctor at their home or wherever they have cell service. Doctors are even able to walk someone through getting their blood pressure checked or a dermatology consultation. VA staff says that it's been a huge benefit for behavioral health patients, parents juggling child care, and older veterans who need to stay informed about their care. We do a video connect appointment. It's like a, almost like a doing a three-way phone call or a four-way phone call. So we have a veteran that comes into the clinic. His son lives in Seattle. His son was actually able to be in his appointment, and the provider, the patient, and the son are all in different locations. Well, Montana Rail Link also unveiling a rolling salute to veterans that you might see on the tracks. Take a look here. This is the first of two special locomotives that will be working freight service between Billings and Idaho. Decorated with the stars and stripes, the locomotive says, thank you, veterans, on the side. Another one like it will be joining the fleet in coming weeks. Still ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, a new McDonald's menu item may not thrill beef growers, but it does have some Montana farmers happy. That story coming up next. And in sports, a hard-hitting golden bear putting new meaning to the phrase playing through pain. We'll meet our athlete of the week coming up in just a bit.